This is the Acupuncturist on Fire podcast. The only acupuncture podcast where you will hear from business insiders, fellow acupuncturists, and be inspired to be the best acupuncturist you can be. Now, here's your host, AJ Adamchik. Welcome to the Acupuncturists on Fire podcast. And today on this episode, you'll be hearing from Matthew Bauer. He will be introducing ANF, the Acupuncture Now Foundation, to us all. He will be touching upon what this organization is all about and their vision. He will also go into the recent crowdfunding movement and what is behind this. Let's go ahead and welcome Matthew to the show. Welcome, Matthew. Hey, thank you, AJ, for having me. I really appreciate it. Great, great. I'm super honored for you to uh, take the time to come on to the show and uh, share this great movement with all of us. So why, don't you go- so. <laughs> so why don't you go ahead and tell us exactly what is the Acupuncture Now Foundation? I'm sure a lot of us have seen you know, a few Facebook posts or YouTube videos of those cool cartoon characters here and there, but no one really knows exactly what is Acupuncture Now Foundation. Well, well, thank you for giving me the chance to explain because, you know, even in the age of communication, social networking, all this kind of stuff, it still is challenging to try to get out to people, even a group of people like acupuncturists, you know, Chinese medicine practitioners, it's still challenging to try to you know, capture what you're about. So I appreciate this format. And the Acupuncture Now Foundation, you know, first we'll go kind of technically, it is It is a nonprofit, um, international, all volunteer foundation. We're not a membership organization. Um, We are a charitable foundation under US IRS uh, laws. And and we, we made the structure of this organization for some very specific reasons that we thought would allow us to complete our mission the best. And our mission, we can talk about the formal mission statement and and some practical ways of breaking it down, but really, really simply, it's it's very simple. Our mission is to look at every problem, every obstacle that is preventing acupuncture from being used to its full potential. We want to identify everything that's holding it back and and latch on to it like a bulldog to do what I call bring down the barriers of misunderstanding. So exactly how we do that, now that gets into a lot of information, which I'm very happy to share all those details, but that is the gist of it. I mean, I am so frustrated after 30 years of practice to see that acupuncture is, is still basically not being used to its full potential almost anywhere in the world and especially in the Western world. So why not and what can we do about it? That's what we're working on and, and we're an international group that's trying to bring you know really great people together to share what they believe and what's happening in their corner of the world so we can make the, the broadest platform for trying to look at what's holding acupuncture back. So why don't you give a few examples of maybe of like what you know, these problems are that are going on within the acupuncture world that, you know, yeah. you guys are that really brought this to life. Like what were those examples? What yeah. is that burning questions? Well, we actually uh, identified uh, six primary um, stumbling blocks or obstacles. And now these are not everything possible. But we, this is what we put in, and it's on our blog. Our, our website is acupuncturenowfoundation.org. There's a button there or a, a tab there for acupuncturists, and under there, there's a blog. And you'll see um, our strategic plan for 2015. And, and we designated six main barriers. The, the first one is that there really is no windfall profit but to be made off of acupuncture. I mean, that's a kind of philosophical way of looking at a barrier. But what I'm saying is that if you think about it, you know, medicine is a business. It's a big business. And most advances in medicine today come about because some group or organization or company or some vested interest um, invest a lot of money to prove that what they are promoting is a good thing, is a valuable, safe and effective, whether it's a drug company or a 
a, a equipment manufacturer, whatever the case is, money is invested to convince the status quo that they should bring this new thing into the fold. The money is invested not out of the goodness of anybody's heart, it's invested with the expectation of making a profit off of that investment. Very that, true. That doesn't happen for acupuncture. No, 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 you know, single company or, you know, small group will, will, has spent the money that should be spent to help educate the status quo and the public and healthcare providers and policymakers and everybody else, because nobody would ever recoup that money. Nobody's going to invest millions of dollars to convince everybody about what acupuncture can do. So what I'm saying is that's the problem. So our solution is crowdfunding, group funding. No, no, some, you know, no company or corporation could possibly invest the money and recoup that money. But if thousands of acupuncturists and dozens of suppliers that supply acupuncture, uh, you know, acupuncturists, schools, you know, people that basically have businesses that make their money off of acupuncturists, if if we can get enough of those to support, which is one of the next barriers that there has been no public education campaign um, to support a really, really well done public education campaign to educate everybody about acupuncture, then that campaign is not only going to put more patients in acupuncturist offices and practices, it's basically going to raise the boats of everybody that's involved with the acupuncture profession, the suppliers and everybody else. Okay. So two things. One is nobody stands to make a lot of money off of acupuncture. That's why we have to find a way in a group way to raise money for the people that will eventually benefit from that, right? So nobody's going to make a windfall profit, but all of us could be doing better in our practices if we reached out to educate people about what this practice is about, about acupuncture and acupuncturist. So we need a public education campaign. That's the other one of the other main obstacles. There's never been a true comprehensive public education campaign to educate people about acupuncture. So um, that's number one and two. No money and no education campaign. Okay. So uh, you know, do you want to get into the three the other ones, or would uh, you want to? Well, let's let me just. I'll just do one more. Okay. okay? out of the six that I think is uh, so important. And, and that is that um, I believe, and in, in some of the people that are were attracting to the Acupuncture Now Foundation, believe that there's really been a problem with the way acupuncture research has evolved over these last couple few decades. Because many of the studies done on acupuncture come to the conclusion that, hey, acupuncture worked, but it didn't seem to matter where you put the needles. I don't know if you've seen that or seen this. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. And I feel like a lot of it now is a lot of the research coming out is like, oh, well, it was just as good. Or if it's not really like nothing's clear, nothing's really right. giving us anything. Like you're saying that there's nothing, no one's spending the money to get us that that over the hump. Well, nobody's because there's been no vested interest to watch out for acupuncture. We've allowed the research to kind of go on a uh, kind of off track because the fact is, and, and I know this not just as a clinician, not just as somebody that's been practicing for 30 years, and you know, I, I currently see you know 15 to 20 patients a day, um, not only for me personally, but you know, I also work within the managed care industry, and we survey our patients, you know, thousands of patients, and we see a consistently high rate of success with acupuncture, uh, independently verified, right? So um, what I see is some kind of disconnect between the controlled clinical trials, what they show as the so-called real acupuncture the effect, the clinical effectiveness of real acupuncture versus sham acupuncture, right? Often they seem to be about equal. 
they, they, they have clinical effect, but the real acupuncture isn't clearly distinguishing itself. But the, the effect of the so-called real acupuncture in so many of these trials is, is far below what I expect in my own practice and what we see as we look at how a bunch of acupuncturists treat a bunch of patients, right? Oh, totally. There's something is wrong there. The, these trials are not reflective of actual clinical practice. They are lowballing the estimate of the effectiveness of acupuncture. And that gives the critics of acupuncture, of which there are, you know, a small but very hardcore group out there, the skeptics and all, that gives them ammunition to say, see there, it's only placebo. But e even for the uh, people that don't look at it as placebo, they still tend to look at it like, well, no, there's something really clinically that happens when we stick needles in people. It just doesn't seem to matter whether you follow any traditional concepts or just stick needles anywhere. Well, that is really holding us back. I can tell you that. It is, from, especially from the mainstream institution perspective. So what I believe, and some others that I'm working with believe, is that one of the biggest problems with current acupuncture research, and I would argue it's probably a big problem with acupuncture practice, especially in the West, is that they are under-treating the subjects. They are not giving acupuncture especially frequently enough. They're stretching the treatments out too far, like once a week. Well, I can tell you once a week for chronic conditions is usually not enough to really get for the treatment to catch hold. I mean, in China, they do every day or every other day. Yeah, or, right? or twice a day at the beginning of, of a real serious condition, multiple times a day. Right, especially for an inpatient in the hospital. Yeah, they could do twice a day. So wait a second. If in China, which we would imagine they know something about this, if they're, if they're doing every day and we over here are doing once a week in our studies, what the heck? You know, how did... How does anybody determine the, the frequency and number of treatments needed to carry out an ac a legitimate acupuncture study? Look at it like a drug, like a, a pharmaceutical agent. You would never do a study on a drug without first establishing what the effective dosage is, right? But in acupuncture research, we have no protocol for first establishing what the uh, effective dosage of acupuncture, the frequency and number of treatments, right? Why don't we have it? Because in a drug study, the drug company would spend the money to figure out what the effective dosage is. But in the acupuncture profession, we've got no vested interest that's trying to control this to make sure that acupuncture is looked at in the best light to show what it could really do, right? Yeah. Just the research has been happening, but how, how, who gets to decide how many treatments it should take? So let me just tell you one thing about this. Um, one of the greatest things about the Acupuncture Now Foundation is that we are an international organization. Catherine Berry, who I got to know from her work with acupuncture professionals, actually I knew Catherine for long before that. She used to have a, a uh, you know an internet um, blog or chat group. Um, she she's done more to get acupuncturists, at least in English, communicating around the world than any other person out there. And when I told her what. I was thinking of doing of the, of the Acupuncture Now Foundation to start an organization that would just really zero in on helping to explain acupuncture to all stakeholders. Uh, she told me, don't just do it in the US. We're having the same problem in all these different countries. There is no public education campaign in any of these countries. There is a kind of lack of leadership in, in organizations to really take this on. So she started introducing me to people in, in, in other countries. And one of the first ones she introduced me to was John McDonald in Australia. And John is like uh, kind of like one of the fathers of Australian acupuncture. He's been practicing since the early 1970s. You know, before wow. Nixon went to China, it's, right? It's crazy. And he's, he's a very well-respected teacher and researcher and, you know, kind of he's done it all in, in Australia. And when I started talking to him about research and about my feeling that every time I see a research study, the first thing I wonder is how many of the treatments did they do over what period of time? 
and how often they don't even say what it is, or if they do, I look at it and say, well, that's not enough treatment to really be effective. And, and he told me at that time, he was just finishing a PhD thesis where he looks at a lot of things about treating hay fever, allergic rhinitis. And one of the things that, that he found in doing this research was, when you looked at all the research studies that were done on allergic rhinitis with acupuncture, he found a clear you know, kind of a difference demarcation between if, if, if it was at least two treatments a week for at least six weeks, the effectiveness rate of the real acupuncture far outperformed the sham up to around 80, 85%. Wow. When you did acupuncture less than twice a week or you know, for less than like 12 total like that, uh, then it came out that it was, uh, you know, some of them showed the real a little better than the sham. Others showed it was about equal, right? So what was the, what was the biggest difference maker in the acupuncture having, you know, much higher clinical success or down around the sham, sticking the needles anywhere? The frequency and number of the treatments, right? So uh, that that's we're we're really excited that we have John. Um, and John is excited about it. We're just so fortunate to have him. So he is heading our research committee. He is, is starting, we, it actually just got launched, I think yesterday. Uh, we're starting to do a review of a bunch of different acupuncture studies, getting an, an, an army of volunteers to look at these, uh, all of these studies. We have a, a, uh, a tool to go a checklist to try to say, okay, did the study do this? Did the study do that? One of the things we're gonna be looking at is did the study, you know, adequately report the frequency and number of the treatments? And if so, we want to look at what they were to see if we start to see, just like he did with allergic rhinitis, if we see a separation between real and sham acupuncture based on, you know, higher frequency of treatment. And, and we, hope, we hope we'll find that. We already know it's there for allergic rhinitis. And if we see that happen in other conditions, then of course we are going to be trying to really uh, uh, shine a spotlight on that and say, hey, all of these studies that were done without any protocol, without any clear direction about the frequency and number of treatments, it's like a drug study where they didn't give enough of the drug. Why don't you toss all of those studies, only look at studies where they do an adequate amount of acupuncture and then see what the effectiveness is. And I think we'll find it's above sham. Oh yeah, big time. And you know, obviously you probably see this in your own uh, office. Like, you know, when, even if someone comes in with pain, obviously if someone's only coming every other week or once a week, you're not going to be able to get them the results they want. But if they come twice, three times a week, that person typically gets better pretty quickly. And it just shows the proof. The proof is right there. And, you know, obviously, yeah, we can say it all we want, but we have to show the numbers to the people. And that's what you're trying to do. And it's amazing that you're doing this. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's really the matter of, Somebody, you know, like for myself, I started my practice 30 years ago, right out of school. I had a wife and two kids to support, and it was just thrown into the deep end, right? And I, I had to, you know, do everything I possibly could to figure out how to make it work for my patients and how to make it, you know, work for me to build a, a career to actually support my family, which I was fortunate to be able to do. Yeah. So, you know, I, I like to say I'm kind of like a, you know, a, a grizzled street fighter. Man. Uh -huh. I, anybody walks in my door, I know I can get results for them or I can figure out pretty soon if I can't get results for them. And, and it's not just me, of course. There's, there's lots of practitioners, not, maybe not enough of them that come out of our schools necessarily because they don't learn the tricks of the trade. But, um, you know, it, I look at this and say, I know a lot of, good, effective, experienced practitioners, when I see 50 and 60% success in these studies, I'm like, oh my gosh, if I was only helping 50, 60% of my patients, I don't think I would have ever built a practice over those years. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. I mean, I've, I'm 28. I've been in practice for three years. And I mean, just alone in the three years, I definitely, you know, I probably wouldn't have survived for three years if that's the only rate I had, you know, and I'm that early and new of a practitioner too, you know? So I totally know what you're saying. Treatment frequency is a major issue for the entire acupuncture community because I think so many practitioners in the West, they try, try to charge at rates that make it 
impossible for people to come in two, three times a week. So they, don't, they end up scheduling the treatments based on the, what the market will bear. It's exactly and what it is. Treatment should be based on how to get the effectiveness, especially what I call squeezing the most benefit out of the fewest number of treatments. That, that's how you gain a, a, uh, an advantage as far as making this work for people. <clears throat> so, you know, that's another big project that, that we're going to be working on. But uh, really, the, um, thankfully, we're, we're getting lots and lots of volunteers to do that. But where, we, where we're not going to get volunteers is where, uh, where we really want to be is uh, developing a really comprehensive marketing strategy. That means hiring experts, PR, communications experts. I've been in touch with many companies. We do have a rough outline of a plan. But the problem is, if you don't have any idea how much money you're going to have to work with, then it makes it very difficult to go to the pros and say, okay, let's let's you know make a you know knockout plan here that's really going to great, get great penetration. First thing I want to know is what's your budget. All right, right? Matt. Well, then, let, Matt, why don't you tell the listener a little bit about your idea for getting this funding for you know this whole idea that you do have? So let's get into that. The listener, I'm sure, wants to know that and be able to contribute. You know give and help this uh, great movement. Right. Well, let me give a little more details about what we know we're going to do, and okay. then we'll go to asking for funds. You know, we want to work with really top uh, consulting firms, communication firms. And we've actually already been consulting with a very a good one that really specializes in what we call cause marketing. You know, work with the Sierra Club and places like that. Okay. That's, that's the caliber of expertise that we want to bring in here is is organizations, you know, companies that work with top, you know, uh, organizations that are really great causes. We know we are going to be producing a series of of regular press releases and um, you know articles for internet magazines and women's health and men's health and. You name it. You know, we we want to do a full court press of starting to really get a you know so much information out about acupuncture, but we want to do this with a overarching strategy. We want to have a campaign. We want to have a theme, and the basic theme. And everybody's worried. Oh, what are you going to say? This is what stopped any ac acupuncture organizations. I've seen it over the years. Is everybody's kind of like you know, afraid that they'll say something that people won't like or how, you know, you can't please everybody. What are you going to say about acupuncture? It's really so simple. Acupuncture helps the body to heal itself. I mean, yeah. that is it. I mean, <laughs> we, we, we all take that for granted. Every acupuncturist will tell people, oh, acupuncture helps the body to heal itself. We are totally blowing it by not realizing how, how revolutionary of a concept that is. Virtually everything in medicine is about taking over for the body with some kind of man-made resource, right? Bringing something to fight against a problem or to blunt the symptoms, kind of like a mechanic fixing a machine. With acupuncture, we have what I believe to be the most powerful tool to spark and stimulate the resources already in the body to help people get more good out of what nature gave them. My goodness. If we could get that message across to people, if we could get it in their heads that this is what acupuncture is all about, squeezing more good out of your own natural resources, who the heck wouldn't want that? Tell me one person that if you said, hey, we can, we can help you get 10, 20, 25% more good out of your own body's resources to fight this problem or that problem, who wouldn't want to get more out of what's already there? Yeah, I I'm, I totally agree with you on that. But I feel that, you know, obviously the biggest hurdle, another big hurdle that maybe that you and this organization might need to get over is the whole needle concept. Um, of course. You know, yes. that's that's usually, you know, even though people are like, oh, I heard it's unbelievable. You know, my mom, my sister, my brother, my dad, everyone says it's unbelievable. It's wonderful. But I just don't like needles. You know, that's such a huge hurdle. And obviously, I'm sure maybe that might be an angle that, 
you know, acting what you're now might want to tackle getting out to the public. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we, we, that is a huge burden, but I always, and I've said this for many years, AJ, really, if you think about it in another way, and I'm not dismissing that, you're right. What we need is I, you know, there is acupuncture. There are acupuncturists in a handful of children's hospitals around the United States, right? I would like to show film kids, little kids, maybe, you know, you know, even with serious illnesses and things, children getting acupuncture and showing that it works and hey, it doesn't hurt and have that on camera. That is priceless. Oh, completely. Right? Yeah. And see, doing something like that, filming things like that, segments like that, it covers many, many, uh, you know, many birds with one stone. One is most Americans would have no idea that a respected hospital would let acupuncture acupuncturist in there to stick needles in children and sick children. So just the fact to educate people that this is happening, it's on too way too small a scale, but that it is happening anywhere, that will bring down some barriers of misunderstanding. Seeing that children, even with serious disorders, are actually benefiting from acupuncture, that will bring down barriers of misunderstanding. Seeing children getting the acupuncture and not even flinching and looking at the camera and saying, it didn't hurt, you know, and, and you know, the things that kids will say when they're, you know, about how happy they are that they're getting better and everything, that will bring down barriers. So we absolutely want to go after everything there. But part of that is, you know, I think many Americans don't even realize that to be an acupuncturist, that you have to go to school and take exams and be licensed and that you're regulated as a healthcare professional. Um, uh, and so when people talk about how the biggest obstacle we have is that people are afraid of needles, I say, well, I'm honestly not so sure about that because if you think about it another way, you know, people will go to a dentist even though nobody likes it. if you say, oh, that person is going to stick these, you know, tools up your gums and all this, you know, scrape around and everything. You say, oh my God, that sounds like the worst thing possible. We've gotten over that. Why? Because we trust dentists and dental hygienists that they are professional enough that they have learned how to take that into consideration to make it something that the average person could tolerate. So when people talk about the fear of needles, in a way, it's really the lack of trust of acupuncturists, right? So this is why we not only need to talk about acupuncture, we have to talk about acupuncturists. We have to help people understand that these are trained, intelligent, caring individuals that, yes, of course, they have figured out how to make the treatment not be so uncomfortable that you couldn't get it, let alone the children in these hospitals. Yeah, it's it's yes. definitely a really good concept. Yeah. The funny part is that what you just said uh, about the dentist thing, Catherine had brought that up to me when I had spoken with Catherine recently. And she said that we need to stop, you know, putting the needle on a pedestal, you know, just like a dentist, you know, they show smiles, they don't show the drill. Right. It's just a tool to help the person, you know, that needle is not the needle is just a tool. You know, we are, it's ourselves that's helping the person, not the needle. That's right. Yeah, it's you know, the, the kind of good news, bad news is, you know, the, the bad news is we've done no public education. The good news is we've done no public education. <laughs> if we do anything, it will be a huge improvement over huge. what we've done so far, right? Huge. But, but we're not just talking about doing anything. I mean, you know, just a little background on me. Um, Probably 20, 27 years ago. That's how old I am. <laughs> so when you were born, uh, I had a patient who was a who worked as a media consultant for a public relations firm, and at that time, I was uh, I was working in the leadership of an acupuncture organization here in California, and I began talking to her. Yeah, how how, how could you how could you use your expertise and your company? You know, how would you take on a client like us? What would you do for an organization that didn't have a lot of money to, you know, really educate the public about something they don't understand, maybe you're afraid of, a lot of mystery around it, a lot of misconceptions around it. 
she spent so much time with me. She was so gracious with her time that she spent a lot of time with me and we talked and uh, you know a lot of uh, a lot of detail about different strategies and everything. And um, she actually offered to do a training of our executive committee uh, of our organization to tr to help to go in and and start to train them about how to how to bring together a public education campaign. And they turned her down. They turned the offer down. I mean, this was something that would have cost you know, many thousands of dollars to, to have a, uh, a media consultant come in and do a training of your, your leadership. Uh, that's that's a, a very expensive thing. So that that really, it, it, it disappointed me greatly. I thought, you know, why not? Why wouldn't, why wouldn't acupuncturists want to tell people about acupuncture? I don't yeah. get it. I still don't get it. So that got me on this mindset about We've got to do this. We've got to figure out a way to get support to do public education. I learned from my patient, it absolutely could be done. You need to build a reputation as an organization that regularly puts out quality information that meets the need of the readership of the publications. You see, these publications, there's all these publications, they've got space to fill every day. They are looking for stories. So the one thing she uh, really you know, got me to understand was, look, if you take the time to win their trust, that they know that they can count on you to deliver well-written material that meets the need of their publication, you won't have to bug them to publish your stories. They will come to you and say, hey, do you have anything for me? You know, I need 600 words. I need 200 words, whatever the case is. So that has always been one of my goals, uh, you know, I've been trying to get the acupuncture organizations to do public education for 25 years. Wow. I've, I've actually had three times when the leadership of one or another of our national organizations told me that they understood that they wanted to make this happen. But every time I went to work with them, I found out that they were so disorganized. They were basically an organization in name only. They couldn't possibly pull off a public education campaign. They, they, and that's really why I formed the ANF was the, the whole story is, I want everybody to know, is that um, when Acupuncture Today did those two articles on the AAAOM called Making Promises They Can't Keep, and they had the picture of the sinking ship, and it, and it detailed their opinion of, the, of what had happened to the, to the AAAOM, I was like, wow, this is the first time in all these years that the average acupuncturist is, is learning that they really have no effective uh, representation on a national level. Now, I, I knew that that had been the case for most of the last 25 plus years, because I had times where I went to work with these organizations to do an important project and found out they were not functional, you see? So I decided, look, if now that the cat's out of the bag, that there really isn't a, a, a functional national organization looking out for the acupuncture profession, maybe now I can, now is the time to try to launch an organization that will only focus on public education. You know, the one thing that I think we can all agree on, you know, we, we end up fighting over a lot of things in our field, but the one thing I think everybody can agree on is um, that both the the acupuncture profession and the public would be better off if people understood more about acupuncture. If they really got it, it would be helpful for the public and us. Obviously, yeah, that's definitely a great point. Obviously, if the public was way more open, obviously all the acupuncturists would be seeing a lot more people, getting better results, seeing more people, the whole nine yards. But real quick, I didn't even know what the – I don't even know what the triple AOM is. That just shows – that if they're irrelevant and they have no pull, they have no show within the organization. I'm, you know, I'm, I would say I'm fresh out of school. I've been out of school for three, four years. So you think about it, I don't even, never even heard of that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, you know, it doesn't completely surprise me because I've, <laughs> I've been watching this for all these years, you know, and I've been involved with organizations on and off, but I actually got out of these organizations because they were fighting each other over education standards about whether all acupuncturists should learn herbs, about whether we should be doctors, blah, blah, blah. It's like, look, I know these are, these are interesting questions, 
but they are divisive issues. They're issues that we've never been able to come together on. And I look at public education as the one thing that we really could come together on. Now, we may not all agree on every little detail of a campaign, but the idea that we should band together and make a real effort to educate people about acupuncture and acupuncturists, who's going to disagree with that, right? So I, I finally decided to form a, a, an independent organization that would only work on that, not get involved in other political issues that, that end up making us uh, you know, fight each other, in the hopes that if we just zeroed in on educating the public, that would be enough for people to say, hey, you know, I'm okay with that. So that's what we've tried to do. Now we can get to what we, you know, we have several different ways that we hope to raise funds. Um, and, you know, initially, I mean, we, we just put up a crowdfunding um, uh, campaign. And where's that at, Matt? Can you tell the so uh, listener where we can find that? You know, I mean, you, you can find it on our acupuncturenowfoundation.org uh, website. Uh, we have a, 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 a tab there that says support us and then donate. On that donate page, there's actually two, two buttons. One is our website's donation button, which is fine to go there. The other one just below it uh, is for the crowdfunding site. The crowdfunding site is on is, is CrowdRise, R-I-S-E. Um, it's a really good crowdfunding site. I'm happy with choosing that one. Um, uh, and then it's forward slash acupuncture now. So cloudrise.com forward slash acupuncture now. But again, you can get that from our uh, acupuncturenowfoundation.org website. So we've done this campaign. We've got on our website, we've got people, uh, ways for people to donate. One of the things that I, I thought was kind of creative and would help people is uh, because I know acupuncturists are jaded. They're, they're, they're leery of people asking them for money, saying, I'm going to help you, give me money. Um, and uh, so I, I put up all of my continuing education courses, five, five hour, you know, PDA, uh, you know, NCCLM approved, California board approved online courses with all the proceeds from those courses going to fund our campaigns. You hear that, listener? So Matt's putting up all his money from all of his stuff, so he's standing right behind this. So don't think that, you know, he's just going to take your money and not, you know, he really wants to deliver, and he's going to deliver. You know, we're getting together as a, you know, a profession and really taking taking this seriously. So, you know, so take Matt serious when he says, you know, he's he's literally donating all his dollars from his, book and his all his C CEO CEU classes all of that's them right. that's right yeah so what I looked at it is I know people are going to be somewhat skeptical about giving you know any of their hard-earned money it's like look all of you have to get continuing education courses right to maintain your licensing so why not just buy them from us for a while for a year or two just buy our courses that's that's the big gamble we're asking you to take <laughs> to give us some resources so then we can start to produce you know we've already made the the video twice as effective and safer we we've done the audio podcast called the jolt files which are still being released by the way there's a whole series of, of podcasts on itunes we did that to give people just a little appetizer just a little taste of what it is we're talking about doing but believe me as proud as i am of those materials that's pretty much out of my pocket or, you know, almost no budget whatsoever. We're saying we want to raise, I, eventually we really need to, the, what we really need to do a full force campaign is ten to $15,000 a month. But we're saying, look, even, even 5,000 a month, that will, that will get us launching stuff that people are going to be really stoked about. I mean, we're going to be making videos. We're going to be producing things, public service announcements, you know, all of these kind of things. We're, we want to do a steady barrage to show the media that we're for real, that this is a real organization of real experts that really knows the subject matter that can be trusted. Because here's one thing we constantly miss out on. 
there is no go-to organization that the media knows that they can uh, you know, go to to get information about acupuncture, reliable, you know, authoritative. Like if they're going to do a story on medicine, they can always go to the AMA, right? Yeah. Well, basically, our AMA was the AAA. OM. You didn't even know they existed. You think the media knows they exist, <laughs> no. right? And and I and really, I don't want to slam the AAA. OM. They are trying to resurrect themselves. And you know, there's another organization you probably don't know about called the Council of State Associations. They're a group of state associations. They're trying to form. I I completely support the need for good membership organizations for acupuncturist AOM practitioners. The unfortunate fact is, as of now, they're not in a strong position. So I'm not competing with them. The ANF is not competing with them. We're an international charitable foundation, not a membership organization. I want to work with the membership organizations. I want to help the membership organizations to be more effective. We're going to be talking about acupuncture they can talk about why people should go to acupuncturist. You know, we will we will tell people about the training, but it's the professional membership organizations that really need to lobby for their members. It's just right now they're not in much of a position to do anything of really real significance. So, you know, we we hope that um, that as we get our reputation starting to be built in the media, what can happen is. Anytime any reporter, any magazine writer, you know, any any uh, correspondence on on the news, any of these uh, venues, anytime somebody goes to do a story about acupuncture, they would like to get the word of a spokesperson of a respected acupuncture authority. As it is right now, they have nowhere to go. So nowhere, this yeah. is this is part of the whole campaign. This is what my my patient. 27 years ago was drilling in my head. Once you build that reputation, they will come to you. So you get the opportunity. Anytime a story on acupuncture is going to break somewhere and they need a credible you know, uh, opinion from somebody involved with that field, you end up then getting the chance to repeat your messaging. And you get that message over and over. Acupuncture helps the body to help itself. It's not painful. You have to be licensed to practice. There's lots of different levels of licensure. Licensed acupuncturists have the highest, most comprehensive level of training. You know, you want to have these talking points. And that's what you need your, your, your uh, PR company, your marketing communications company. You need them to sit down with you and map this whole thing out so you can get this campaign going. And then you can be, you know, keep, you keep it simple. And you keep repeating the message over and over again, and eventually it starts to sink in people's heads. Yeah, this is uh, some really uh, amazing stuff. I'm sure you've had this this information just boggling in your head for all these years, and you're finally just being like, "All right, I'm going to take action. I'm doing it." So, uh, for the listener out there, you know, this is uh, the real deal. And you know, I'm sure that you might have seen that video that he's talking about. What is the the little cartoon video? Twice as effective and safer. Exactly that one that was popping around for the for a few months ago. On uh, I think I might have shared it. We might have put it up on a blog post or two. And you know, it definitely is cool stuff. And I'm sure that was like your beginning, trying to get stuff out there, right? That's right. That was just that. Honestly, that was something that we did, scraping a little money together just so we could give people an idea of what could be done. But this is like, you know, this is like what. You, you magnify the the money and you magnify the professionalism and the, you know, like I, I actually, we don't just want to do animated videos, you know, animated videos are less expensive to do than, you know, uh, live videos. So that it is one tool, but we want to do a multi-prong, multi-year campaign. So I don't, I don't know if you happen to know, ever have seen the movie, um, called 9,000 Needles. Yeah, I'm very familiar with it. Okay, well, I got to know the the man that made that movie. You, you know, the, the, it was his brother that was the subject of the movie. And we're, we've got to be friends. And from the very first instant that I learned of that movie, I picked up a phone and called this guy and we connected and we're just like, and I'm telling him, look, 
I've been waiting for something like this for years, you know. And we started talking right away about, hey, what can we do to help 9,000 needles to promote it? But after that, let's talk about making a feature length documentary about acupuncture. And I mean, I'm, I want to produce a documentary that would go up for award consideration. You know, I'm talking about a documentary. There is so much happening with acupuncture all over the world. We could blow people's minds if we do it right, but it takes people that know what's really happening in this field around the world. And it also takes a filmmaker that has the filmmaking chops and also really gets about what acupuncture is. And, and Doug Durth has a production company. You know, he's, he's made a feature length movie himself. He does music videos and all sorts of things. He actually just did a documentary for The Walking Dead. Uh, oh, wow. You know, we show, right? He's in our corner. We've been talking for years about what it would take, about how we would shoot a documentary. He's, he's ready to do it, but it's going to take some money to do it, but not nearly as much as people think. But here's the thing. I don't just want to say, hey, let's do a crowdfunding thing and make a documentary. We, we're going to do that. We want to do that. But first, we have to build the Acupuncture Now Foundation to be known in the media's eyes. We have to build it as an organization that people start to recognize and take seriously. So then when we come out with the documentary, our ability to make hay out of it, our ability to then get people into practitioners' office, offices is going to be 100 times higher than if we just put all of our you know, eggs into one movie basket, right? Yeah, you want to get like uh, articles and stuff into like big big uh, media, like you're saying, like uh, health, when, women's health and stuff like that, correct? That's right. And also, but what we also need is, and just like you mentioned about our video, Twice as Effective and Safer, which by the way, was, was about studies done on acupuncture for chronic low back pain. And, um, you know, we actually are going to start doing more to promote just even that video. But the thing is that video could have been so much more impactful if instead of a few dozen acupuncturists, there were several thousand acupuncturists pushing, you know, doing through their social media, their networks, their networks. So one of the things the Acupuncture Now Foundation wants to do is we want to build, you know, connection with thousands of practitioners, you know, around the world. We want to be a hub. We, we want to start producing information also for acupuncturists so people will keep connected with us. So when we come out with something like a video, we will have the way to spread it around the internet way more than just hiring a PR company could do. Yeah, or just running ads, you know, exactly. It's, it's way That's better right. organically and more efficient organically through social media. Just all they have to do is share, send, share, tweet, right. all these different avenues. So we're, we are trying to build a foundation for a, a stable comp, uh, con, um, organization that will be around, you know, five, 10 years later. And, uh, and we need to connect with our practitioners because this is for them and the public. And um, because the practitioners have connection with the public, you know, this is about exponential communication, right? So. We need to build uh, that, that layers of, of connection throughout the acupuncture Chinese medicine community. And believe me, we're, we're already off to a very good start. The, we were invited to a conference in Europe um, of, of TCM organizations, and we had two members go there. Um, and uh, it was it was decided they 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 talked about they they really wanted to form a a work group um, to brainstorm and put together strategies for trying to promote and and move forward Chinese medicine in Europe and in combination with the U.S. So the Acupuncture Now Foundation was was uh, selected to be a kind of primary organizer between the U.S. Uh, the the NCCAOM is is going to be involved in this and these European groups. And, and this is just, you know, we, we launched six months ago. 
Uh, you know, we just came from nothing, from an idea to a registered legal 501c3 charitable organization with, with, a, with a name and a mission statement and a logo and um, people from several different countries working with us. Now we're going to be connecting with these European organizations, everything. This is, in, you know, producing our video, the joke files, the crowdfunding thing. This is all in six months. This is what our other organizations have not been able to do. When I talked about the organizational structure, about why we chose not to be a membership organization, why we wanted to be a foundation and all of this sort of thing, part of that is so we can make decisions. Now, th this is, I am the founder of this, but believe me, I don't make decisions on my own. I have a group that I work with, and that group is going to be growing as we, as we grow. Um, and it, it'll end up being much less about me and much more about the whole group. Um, but it takes somebody to get this started. But, you know, we wanted to have an organizational structure where we could make executive decisions, you know, in an, ex, in an expeditious manner. Because when you're talking about working with the media and getting messaging out, somebody calls you and says, hey, you, you know, What's your opinion on this sort of thing? Somebody said this, or your, your article said that, we need clarification. You can't say, well, I'll bring it to my board of directors at our quarterly meeting, you know, six weeks from now, and then we'll vote about it. And, you know, that's, yeah. you don't get anything done that way. You, you've got to have, you've got to have a good plan. You've got to be flexible to change the plan if there's reason to, but you've got to be able to make decisions and get things, you know, going. Yeah, yeah, this is, uh, you know, everything that all these points that you're bringing up are unbelievable. And it's definitely something that needs to be done. And it's unbelievable that you're taking the initiative to do it. And I, I can't, you know, give it to you enough that, you know, this is much appreciated from me as an acupuncturist. And I'm extremely happy that it's happening and any I can, I can do and that I can help. And for the listener, you know, if you can help, if you want to get involved, you know, get in contact with ANF at a and um, acupuncturenowfoundation.org and you know get involved you know d obviously get on that crowd rise um funding page you know donate what you can um you know share th share the links all over facebook um you know this video share this video share this audio clip whatever you can do to make this aware throughout you know throughout the acupuncturist then obviously we need to get this information to the public you know that this is out there that acupuncture is for real and it's 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 uh it's coming for you you know it's it's getting big it really is it's unbelievable i'm sure when you were an acupuncturist matt that you know acupuncture was such a you know so small and even since i've gone to school and everything i've seen it just grow and grow and grow and you know i fell in love with it i'm 28 now i fell in love with it when i was 15 years old I blew my arm out playing baseball and I, you know, I went to an acupuncturist and people were like, why are you going to an acupuncturist? You know, I was like, well, nothing was helping me. And I, and I, that's what I hate about acupuncture too, that, you know, everybody comes to us as they, it's the last ditch. It's, oh, I tried this and oh, I guess I'll give that a chance. I've tried everything else already. And that's why this public push is so important to get to that forefront of being that first option, you know, being that, oh, I'm hurt or right, I'm going to the acupuncturist. I'm sick. I'm going to the acupuncturist. Not I've tried everything else and I'm going to go to it last. Well, yeah. if we could get that messaging across that acupuncture boosts your body's own resources and its own way to fight, why wouldn't everybody want to have that as be their first thing? You know, it's, it's what I call, you know, going up the risk ladder, you know, start with the low risk therapy that has a chance to work like acupuncture because it sparks your body's own resources. Only go up the risk ladder if you're not happy with the low risk therapy. And acupuncture has the best benefit to risk ratio of about any kind of therapy for so many different conditions. That's the sort of information we need to get across to people. Yeah, especially with the drug epidemic going on in this country. Um, you know, it's unbelievable. And it, it is insane that we have this epidemic going on where here we have this powerful healing tool that uses the body's own chemistry, we could make such a dent in this drug problem, and yet the media isn't putting the two together. So, you know, that twice as effective and safer video, that's about chronic low back pain. Do you have any idea how many people that are, you know, 
the, the use of opioid medications has been called by our Centers for Disease Control, the worst drug epidemic in the history of the United States. Opioids now have passed auto accidents as the number one leading cause of deaths in adults, accidental deaths in adults in the United States. We have all this stuff happening. And here, over here, we have this therapy that for conditions like chronic low back pain, which is probably the number one condition that gets people on these pain-killing medications, we have these studies done showing that it's twice as effective, right? Now, the problem with the studies is it didn't matter where you put the needles, right? And I'm saying, baloney, who cares? The public doesn't care about that. That's a inside the beltway argument between skeptics and acupuncturists. Nobody cares about that. If it's twice as effective and it's far safer because it's drugless, that's what we should be focusing on. We, if we had a public relations machinery up right now, we could be making so much hay off of this opioid you know, tragedy that's happening right now. We should be there every time saying there is an alternative. There, we absolutely can make a, a big dent in this. Why aren't the policymakers taking us seriously? Because there's no money to be made. There's all of those obstacles we talked about earlier. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to get together. That's what we're trying to tackle with the Acupuncture Now Foundation. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So, uh, you know, Matt, why don't you just tell the listener exactly what they should be doing? What What do you want them to do to get involved? What do you want, you know, what do they you want? Okay. Thank you. Yes. Of course, we want we would like people to purchase our continuing education courses. And by the way, they're my courses. I think they're good because it's you know twenty five plus years of treating you know thousands and thousands of patients. And so I tried to put it's not fluff. It's actually good clinical courses. And Matt, these courses are on the website or your website. Where are these courses? They are, they are on acupuncturenowfoundation.org. You'll see a tab there for CEU you know PDA courses, right. uh, five courses. So. Purchase our courses. Tell your friends to purchase our courses. Go to our crowdfunding or our website. Donate whatever you can. But also, tell your, if you have connection with the state association or any kind of association, your acupuncture school. We are going to all the organizations. We are going, we are requesting the schools to get behind us. We are requesting the state and whatever national associations there are to get behind us. Um, we've already reached out to them. They know all about us. They basically think that we, we could be a really good thing. But the more pressure gets put on them by their members or their alumni, their students, you know, students in schools, tell your schools, hey, why aren't you guys helping these guys? Why aren't you getting behind it? Because we're not just telling people, give us money. We've got the plan. You know, give it. If we, there's there's a there's a, a a chiropractic foundation, and um, the pe people that started the chiropractic foundation, I, I I consulted with before I started the Acupuncture Now Foundation, and I said, how did you deal with the the chiropractic associations, these organizations? And I was told that they told them, we want your support, but not your ideas, <laughs> right? And it's like, wait, wait a second. I, I that, that's funny to me. Okay, you you want them to give you money, you want them to support you, but you know you're going to take care of it. You don't even want their input, right? Well, we're okay with input. We want input. We want organizations. We want them to come to us and say, we're not so sure we're we're good with this. What's your complaint? What's your problem? Why aren't you supporting this? What is there about this? that gives you pause, right? Come to us, tell us, and we will work it out. Because what we're trying to do is in everybody's best interest. And, you know, there are some people say, well, but we have our own online CU courses, you're competing with us. Okay, maybe there is some kind of little competition here or there, but it's like, whatever. We just, we hope that your listeners and anybody this gets to is just say, if you have if you have questions, come to us. We're completely open. That's what I'm trying. Some of what I'm trying to do here. If the organizations have questions, come to us. I've asked them. Give us liaisons. Have representatives come from your organization 
and deal with our leadership. <clears throat> Bring to the table any concerns that you have, and I'm sure we can work them out. So if we can get the rank and file practitioners behind us, even if it's only $20, $10 on our crowdfunding site, believe me, that helps us. Not only does it help us financially, but it then gives us a connection where we can show, hey, if we, you know, if we get thousands of people, even, even donating small amounts, then we'll be able to show the organizations and, and the suppliers and everything, we are connected. We have a groundswell of support for this. Why aren't you doing your share, right? So people should tell everybody they know that they're supporting this. Why aren't you supporting it? And, you know, let's really get this rolling. We don't, we don't have, as far as I'm concerned, we don't have five years to think about this. You know, we, we really need to be out there branding acupuncture and acupuncturist what this is all about. Because you said yourself, there's all sorts of stuff that just since you got into this field, there's a lot more happening. Well, all that's happening is not being, it's not being uh, like uh, steered by us. It's not being directed by us. It's happening almost in spite of us. It's, it's, it's happening without our exerting any conscious control over what fork in the road it takes. We're the ones that understand this therapy and what it can do. We should be the one leading the narrative. Oh yeah, for sure. And you know, obviously, you know, I don't. We don't need to discuss it or anything right now. But the whole, you know, dry needling situation. You know, we need to get the that public awareness out there of what it is and why maybe it should be out there or it shouldn't be out there. You know, that's you know that's a thing that public needs to know about too. That's right. We no. I I've, I've been telling. Again, we not just acupuncture, but acupuncturist. We need to be be directing the narrative, and uh, be you know if acupuncturists were recognized as the leading experts on this incredibly remarkable ability to spark the body's own resources, then threats from things that their perceived threat, threats from things like dry needling, it'd be like you know, we would be in the driver's seat, right? And, and and we're not in the driver's seat, but we haven't really tried to get in the driver's seat. And that's what this organization is all about, is, is the education part of being in the driver's seat. It's unbelievable. You're just taking action. It's like, you know, there's no, obviously, like you said, there's nobody out there doing it. So you're grabbing life by the horns and doing it. You know, that's what it's all about. I love it. Okay. I've been, you know, 30 years in practice. I've tried to do this for so long. It was like, you know, every time I tried to get the organizations to do it and they and they said they would and then they didn't, they couldn't do anything. I was like, okay, that's it. I'm done. No more. I'm on, you know, I work so hard on this. I mean, I my idea originally 25 years ago was to do a big national rally where we would get acupuncturists to get all of their patients to show up in different parks around the country and do a big national I've been helped by acupuncture rally. It was a great idea. It would have been amazing. It would have put us on the map 25 years ago. Um, it would have set us up to be in the driver's seat about, you know, driving the narrative about acupuncture and acupuncturists. But I, I put in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours over these different times trying to get this, you know, to happen. And uh, every time I thought, that's it. I'm, I'm never going to do this again. But then when I saw that the, the cat was out of the bag out of about our national association being in trouble. I thought, well, one last time. So this is pretty, this really is it for me. I mean, if, if we don't make a go of this this time, I mean, you know, I, I could be, I've got a nice steady practice. I could write some books and go travel, do classes. You know, I could, I could have a nice little, uh, uh, semi-retirement here after 30 years. I, I guess deserve. I'll I guess I'll have to take over then, Matt. You know, then right. I'll I guess I'll have to you know right. take charge. Hey, I, I could I could use a, a young person like you. Believe me, AJ. I would just want to tell you, you know, it is I when I say I get burned out and I'm I'm, I'm done and everything. Then I see young people like yourself, and it, it really gives me hope to say, hey, you know. The, the so many people of my generation or even the generation after me 
they got so burned out because we were fighting all the time. And, and it's just like, nobody wants to get involved. Like, oh, I want to do my share and get in and fight with a colleague. You know, who wants to do that? Yeah, right? that's the one thing I've really noticed. Uh, even even just Facebook alone, you know, you know, us Facebook, us acupuncturists need to stop having such hostility against each other and work together and and come together as and and as one. You know, it seems like there's a lot of hostility and a lot of fighting going on within our our own organizations and our own profession. And it's very, I'm very like, you know, almost people are leaving certain Facebook groups and different you know, organizations because of that. And obviously, you know, you left big organizations and groups because of that, because of hostility. And it's, it's not good. And we need to learn to be together and, and fight together. You, you find the things that you agree on and work on those and put the things that you disagree on, on the back burner. And when you actually accomplish something of real significance, because you came together on something that there was pretty much broad agreement on, then guess what? Maybe as you work together on that thing you agreed on, then you'll find a way to deal with some of the things that you disagree because now you've got experience in accomplishing something. You see what I mean? Yeah. And and that's that's what this is. That, you know what what we're all about is we just we want to stay in on the relatively non-controversial subject of educating the public, healthcare providers, and health policymakers. Who, who doesn't agree that that's not a good thing to do? Ah, it's unbelievable, Matt. So uh, you have any last last uh, things to say for the listener and, you know, any closing cost, uh, closing thoughts to this, uh, you know, talk? Well, I, I think just to emphasize again, anybody that, like I, I've told the people that I work with, they're going out, you know, they were just in Germany this weekend. John McDonald is giving a talk at a conference in, in uh, Australia about the ANF and including about the research project. And basically what I try to tell, tell our team is we don't, I don't expect everybody to buy into what we're saying and completely get behind us. Um, but what I really hope won't happen is that people think, hey, that sounds like a good idea, but I have this reservation and keep it to themselves. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm really, I've put all sorts of my, my time, money, and energy, and we're gathering people that are doing the same thing, putting their time, money, and energy into it. If you have a, a, an issue or a problem, if you have a concern about what we're doing, please do us the courtesy of bringing it to us so we have the chance to respond to that concern. Because as I told you in the couple minutes before we got ready for this talk, honestly, I don't understand why anybody in our schools, in our membership organizations, the rank and file acupuncturists, I don't understand why anybody wouldn't get behind what we're doing. Oh, so totally. if there is a reason, please bring it to us exactly. so we can at least try to address it. Exactly. So for the listener, listen, you know, what Matt's trying to say is that, you know, get behind him. You know, if you charge $60 for one treatment, you know, Donate a third of one treatment of a whole month. Think about it. If you do a couple hundred treatments in a month, one third of a treatment is, you know, if you charge 60 bucks, $20, get on that crowd rise fund, donate $20. If we could get a couple thousand people to donate, you know, that'd be a lot of money to go towards this great, great cause for all of us. It's not for Matt. It's not for me. It's for all of us. So stop trying to, you know, get on there, donate $20, donate whatever you can, and really, you know, we'll make a difference. Thank you very much, AJ. And so one thing I was going to tell you, acupuncturist on fire? Yeah. Right? Well, you know, we've got treatment for that, you know. <laughs> we've got an ointment. We've got an herbal ointment we can use for that. So. Yeah, exactly, right? You know? I just want everybody to know I, I, I get very passionate about this and I get serious because to me it's it's really getting it out to people, man. I who doesn't want more people to know about this? But I want everybody to know I'm I'm not so serious all the time. And, <laughs> uh, you know, come and work come and work with us and have some fun seeing things actually getting done. Exactly. So this is the new this is the new thing in acupuncture right now. This is the new acupuncture getting out there and you know, we're taking over. So, uh, Matt, I want to really thank you for coming on and, uh, anything else? 
No, that's it. All right. We'll catch you on the next one. This has been the Acupuncturist on Fire podcast with AJ Adamchick. To continue being inspired, head over to acupuncturistonfire.com and find AJ on Instagram at acupuncturistonfire.